Hi, I'm Dr. Deepak Meghur and today we have this 85-year-old gentleman who has a surex foliation, a non-dilating pupil and a dense cataract. But the real challenge is he has got severe generalized zonular weakness, which is evident by the presence of phacodonosis and iridodonosis at the slit lamp. On clinical examination, it doesn't look like I can save the bag. In this case, my planning is to perform manual smonition cataract surgery with an iris clip lens fixation. So let's see how things turn out. The surgery is being done under posterior subtenance anesthesia. The conjunctival flap is raised and bleeding epistheral vessels are cauterized. A small posterior scleral groove is created which is used primarily for fixating the globe while creating the tunnel. 6.5 mm external scleral incision is made. Crescent blade is used to create the sclerocorneal tunnel. So I typically begin from the center and then go on either side. Typically, the external groove is about 1 mm behind the limbus and the intracorneal length is about 1.5 mm. And the appropriate depth is determined by looking at the blade. The blade has to be just visible under the sclera. It's about 0.5 mm depth and this is the plane in which the sclerocorneal tunnel is being made. And once we get the right plane, it's quite simple, easy and fast. I'm going to create this tunneling on either side of the center point and the internal entry is going to be about 0.5 to 1 millimeter bigger than the external entry. Mind you, the internal entry is always going to be parallel to that of the limbus that's in a U-shaped contrary to the frown-shaped external incision. The, my assistant is irrigating to ensure that my visibility is not compromised and I can see well as the tunnel is being made. Time to create side port incisions. They are created diagonally opposite at 3 and 9 o'clock positions. I'm trying to use intracamel phenocaine just to see whether the pupil dilates, but it's not helpful. Capsule is stained and the antechamber is pressurized with OVD. Using a sharp 2.8 mm keratome, the antechamber is perforated to the desmence membrane and the sclerocorneal tunnel is enlarged on either side. As I puncture the anterocapsule with the needle, we can see that there are multiple radial folds arising at the anterocapsule, suggesting the laxity of the zonules. The flap is raised and the needle is changed with the forceps. And using the forceps, I'm trying to create a rexus. Eventually, I have the plan to sacrifice the bag. The rexus is not uh, large enough, but I'm not so much overtly concerned about it. This because eventually, I'm planning to sacrifice the bag and remove it. I don't intend to save the bag. Using two Sinsky hooks, I'm just trying to maneuver the nucleus out of the bag into the antechamber. chamber. And during these maneuvers, the bag which is adherent to the nucleus is also trying to come out. Nevertheless, the nucleus alone could be wheeled out, but by this time the capsule bag is also severely weakened. The entire nucleus is then wheeled out into the antechamber chamber under the cover of OVD using the phaco sandwich technique. The lens dialer goes above the nucleus and the vectus goes under it. The dialer pushes the lens down and the entire complex of the dialer, lens and the vectus is pulled out. Viscoelastic is used to flush out some of the remaining debris. I want to express out all the epinucleus in the loose cortex and I'm going to use irrigation to do that. And the moment I press the posterior lip of the scleral tunnel and trying to irrigate it out, the capsular bag in its entirety along with the cortex and the epinucleus is flushed out. So now we have an intercapsular extraction. Time to perform the antivitrectomy and then fix the lens. Diluted tramson acetate is used to stain any prolapsed vitreous. Bimanual antivitrectomy is being performed now. The severe corneal fold in the eye is becoming a little bit soft as I'm trying to maneuver through the two side ports. So I changed my strategy and I'm going to enter through the main incision itself with the cutter. 
By this, the, I'm preventing the tunnel from collapsing. I'm pressing the probe of the cutter against the roof of the tunnel. In that way, I'm preventing the AC from collapsing and the visibility is also great because now I don't have these corneal folds. The vitreous which is prolapsed across the pupil into the antechamber is being taken care of. The vitreous in and around the pupil, maybe just below it, needs to be cleared off. It's important to realize that we don't want to have a very soft eye. So doing an excessive antivitrectomy is going to make the eye extremely soft. Just I'm going to do what is required. That is just around the pupil and below it. That's it. Time to do a peripheral aridectomy. The superior area, the visibility is not so great because of a thick arcus. So I'm going to do an aridectomy at the 6 o'clock position. The typical settings are IA cut mode. That's irrigation, aspiration and cut. The cutting is also kept in a linear mode. It is set at a maximum of 100 cuts in per minute. And this is a very controlled way of performing aridectomy. Once I go to foot pedal 2, we have the aspiration mode which kicks in, which grasps hold of the iris and then pressing it down to the third position, it induces the cut. I'm just using a couple of cuts so we have a nice little hole in the iris. I'm using cohesive OVD like sodium hyaluronate to form the chamber uh, before implanting the lens. This ensures that the chamber is maintained slightly better. The iris claw lens is placed over the iris and then it is rotated so that we get the right orientation. I'm using this iris claw lens forceps. Just to pause here a little bit and just show you that the point at which I grip the lens is exactly at the point where the actual claw or the breach is there in the haptic because this gives me an indirect evidence where to push the iris down for it to get enclaved. So this is a small trick which I want to share with you. The reason I'm highlighting this point is the moment the haptic goes under the iris, we're blinded and we don't have an idea where the slit in the haptic is. So if you're holding the forceps exactly at the line which is joining the slit in the haptic, then we know exactly what is the location of the slit in the haptic under the iris. Then the haptic is then pushed against the iris while using a 26 number blunt cannula, I'm going to push the iris down. So this is going to ensure that the iris gets enclaved or stuck in the slit of the haptic. Before leaving my grasp on the eye well, I just pull it centrally so that I can see that the iris is also moving along with it. This movement ensures that the iris has truly got enclaved in the slit of the haptic. Only once I'm certain that the lens is truly enclaved in the iris, I'm going to leave my grasp on the eye well. This ensures that it doesn't fall back into the vitreous. I come out, re-inject OVD and time to enclave the second haptic into the iris. Again the same principle, I'm going to hold the lens and the position of these plates are going to be directly in line with the slit which is there in the haptic. So again the haptic goes behind the iris and I know where the slit in the haptic is. The haptic is pushed against the iris and the 26G blunt cannula is just pushed down so that this ensures that the iris gets enclaved in the slit opening of the haptic. So now we have a nice enclavation. I'm going to use a Sinsky hook and just trying to nudge the lens around and just to ensure that it's truly stable. I'm going in with my cutter just below the lens to remove all the OVD and some of the muck which has entered into the vitreous cavity. And in a couple of minutes it's all clear. Now I'm going to remove all the OVD which is in front of the lens. Time to close. Since the patient had an against the rule stigmatism of about 1.5 cylinder at 100 degrees, I'm going to use a single radial stitch to counter this against the rule stigmatism and hopefully it should work. The knot is nicely buried into the sclera. Air bubble is aspirated out, the side ports are hydrated, intracranial antibiotics are placed into the eye. I'm going to use the glue to close the conjunctival flap. A couple of drops of these glue is good enough to attach the conjunctival flap. That's it, the case is done. These are the post-operative pictures and by 6 weeks, 
patient had an excellent visual recovery and had the best corrected visual acuity of 66 he has a cylinder of about minus 0.75 at 105 degrees to summarize iris claw lenses are a great way to treat uh, aphakia and we have been using this extensively for the last maybe 3 4 years it's not a very long follow up but they have been a very useful adjunct and uh, once we started using them uh, we have our usage of scleral fixation lenses has gone down dramatically and i find that they do a reasonably well job with no serious complications the biggest advantage is it's quick and fast to use even in a primary surgery setting itself so that's the biggest advantage and uh, there are no significant uh, side effects which we have noted off and uh, patients are doing pretty well So that was it thank you for watching and hope you found this helpful